Shanti was a joyful person. And she has the right to be remembered and to let everyone know that we have had no closure and we need closure and we need to find Karina. It has been two years since Karina McClurklin vanished without a trace from Kokomo. That's all we want. We want Karina back one way or the other so this family can have peace. Today we're in uh, Kokomo, Indiana. We just wrapped up with Karina and her family, Jerry and James, her father. This one was, uh, you know, is a tough one, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, very straightforward right now. We did not find Karina on this one. She's a 19-year-old girl who went missing four years ago. Today is Karina's birthday. Yesterday was Grandma's birthday. Karina would be 23, 23 years today. 23 years old today, and it's just beyond the four-year anniversary of when Karina went missing. Uh, we've suspected, you know, some water that we're able to check those locations off now. But there's, but there's also still more water that other people can jump into. So, you know, focus on this. If you're anywhere in the Kokomo area, the Indiana area, and you want to help the family, this story right here is going to fill you in as to the search, the stories behind it, and what you can do to jump over here. Sam and I, I think uh, the best thing to do right now is let's jump into the story, bring uh, Jerry and her family into it, and I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Here we are on day one. Sam and I, Sam, Sam the Adventure Man, and I were running hours behind. Almost a day behind is yep. really where we're at because we ended up with a flat tire last night, threw us back, and our big thing is we wanted to rush to be here because we have uh, Jerry. Jerry is the grandmother of Karina, and we're dealing with something like really special today for you because it's your birthday. And we're dealing with Karina's birthday that's coming up tomorrow. And I think that we just kind of need to bring everybody up to speed as to your granddaughter, where we're at, who she is, and the purpose of us being here today. She's been missing uh, four years. Come next month, the 11th, from here, Kokomo, Indiana, with no help from local authorities. They won't call in the FBI for any reason. State police won't come in, and the sheriffs won't come in. The attorney general wouldn't even help. The NAACP wouldn't even step in. So we're at wit's end. We've done everything we can. We've searched over 500 miles in and around Kokomo for her. What are, what are your theories as to where Karina ended up? And how did she, we, I mean, you believe that she may have been killed or did she run away, kidnapped? Where are we at on that? Well, the police told my son, they called him in in December 2016 and said that they had found blood in the trunk of a car and they needed him and the mother to give DNA. So he came into town and he did so and then they told him to start looking for her remains. And that's what we've been doing ever since. Because if Karina was alive, she would have reached out to one of her sisters or her brothers or her mother or her grandma because her grandfather died and they were really close. And if she was alive, she would have found a way to get back to Kokomo. And then especially after the police told us to start looking for her remains and with the blood in the trunk of a car. They've even stated that they know who done it. They've told us the same name for four years, but have not acted on it. So with the blood that's in the car, we're 100% like match? I have no idea. I'm just a grandmother. They don't tell me anything. They won't talk to me. I've been cursed, ranted and raved at. I'm just a grandmother. Okay. Uh, they don't. They don't even want to speak to me, you know. Well, we have Jimmy coming as well, her father. Yes. Have they not shared the information with him either? Like they don't contact my son. My son has to reach out to them. We found clothing before. We found bones before. And I've had to go down there and beg them to let me know if it was Karina's. And they eventually tell me no. We don't know if it is was or not because they're so tight-lipped. And um, as my son said, Geraldine, they don't like you down there. Right and he had to put him in his place, their place, because they were bashing me at his last meeting they, they had. But Jimmy, they had didn't talk to Jimmy for her dad for two years. They can't even pick up the phone and dial it and say, Mr. McClurkin, I just thought I'd let you know that we're still working your daughter's case. How long did that take? 
So, so, so I'm left right now with the wondering, which, which you've already been wondering, focusing just on the blood, is that we don't have an answer yes or not. They, they said, based upon the blood evidence, start looking for remains, but they never did either say 100%, Jerry, your granddaughter is, is no longer with us. Start looking All they for say is, he done it. He done it, he done it, he done it. You know, and unless he wants to come in and confess to it, there's nothing we can do. And I said to the chief of police, you just said he, and you know who he is. He said, yes, I do. But they won't act on it. I've been told so many stories of her being dismembered, threw in water, beaten, raped, shot up. And Korea did not like needles. So I know if somebody gave her a shot, it had to be a have to, because Karina did not like needles. So we're just at wit's end. My, my jaw is just like, yeah, yeah. It's... Like I, I don't even know how to take this from here. Like right now, I want to wow. hug you as well, but <laughs> I know we have really like this whole COVID thing, so we're trying to social distance here. But, I don't care, you know. I do. <laughs> as far as us coming in as divers to help you in, in in a way that nobody has been able to help you yet. Water is our specialty. We have sonar. I've got Sam. Sam, the adventure man, is here with me as well. And I think that that's what you know we need to do for you. You have how many locations? You're like Jared. We need to check this, 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 and this. I understand that there's a pond that's back behind the motel. Uh -huh. that, that needs to be checked has never been checked. Right. Um, I guess there's a focus on a kind of a swamp. I was hoping it was deeper, but I heard that it's only six feet deep. I was it's told it was 25 foot deep at one time. Sometimes only a foot and a half is what I'm pulling that one. So. But I had a, a gentleman go check it, and he said that uh, it's shallow at one end, which it was shallow anyway, but in the center it's deeper. Okay. And there was a girl that went on the news that was in jail, contacted the news channel, and uh, went on there and told her story that she was put in that swamp. I went downtown and told the information, and they said she was a liar, because everybody's a liar to Kokomo PD. They've always said, they're lying, they're lying, they're lying, including me. They went out there. I sat on their property for two weeks, and across the street, the lady told me I could sit there, and so I sat there and waited for the cops to come out. The lead detective came out, and I sat and watched him, and he got on a golf cart, went across the road, and I timed him on my phone. He went over there for eight minutes on that golf cart and then left. And so I asked the gentleman that took him over, I said, did he even get off the golf cart? He said, no. I said, I didn't think so in his shoes. So I went back to the chief of police and stated about the pond. And he said, we don't have the resources to search and dive. Sir, you've got uh, canoes and boats over there on Washington Street hanging up in the fire station. Those are for search and rescue. What do you think this is? Yeah. The chefs could have came in and dived. They have diving teams that they teach. They could have taught, had them go as a teaching thing, but the sheriffs won't come in and KPD won't, I mean, because KPD has to invite them in. State police won't come in because KPD has got to invite them in. So we're at loss, but we was told, and she's on, you can Google it, she's on the computer and she was on the news channel telling that she was beaten and shot up and put in that pond. 49-year-old Renee Murphy knows about jails and crimes. She's serving time for violating her home detention for a dealing heroin conviction. And she says she's been told by inmates and other sources what happened to 19-year-old Karina McClurkin, who has been missing since October 11, 2016. She says a teen's dope dealer had her killed. Karina had stolen some drugs from him. How he had paid another individual to give her what they call a hot shot, which is basically either bad dope or way too much so that she wouldn't survive it. This Garden Inn is now closed, but according to Murphy, back in 2016, McClurkin was given a lethal dose of illicit drugs and died inside that hotel. They wrapped her in a car cover and then they took her out and they threw her in this pond. We will not give the exact location of that pond, but Kevin Stone lives very close to it. He says police did visit the site. They was up here on the hill talking about there could be, a, could have been a girl had overdosed and she's back here buried somewhere. So... Did they ever look? No, 
No searching? No, no searching at all. Did that surprise you? Yes. Right now, what I know that we're dealing with is we're dealing with the pond behind the motel, which it sounds like, you know, she was lowered out of a window is one of the rumors, and then taken to this pond. Yeah, at a party, some party supposedly, I don't know. Okay. It's all rumors, we've heard, like I said, so many rumors on Karina that we just don't know. And every rumor that I heard that sounded like it made sense from her being in a freezer in a vacant house, which sounded legit because they just found one five years ago in a freezer over on Elm Street. They didn't even want to go check that house. Huh. You know, they said, I can't say on camera what they said, but it was belligerent. Right. But they finally did go. And then I was labeled the crazy lady in a purple coat because I asked them to go check the freezer from a granddaughter. Right. Hey, and I'm just going to be very straightforward with everybody. You know, my daughters ever go missing? I mean, and nobody does anything about it? That's my my, yeah. my heart for my, uh, yeah. my son. And, you know, and your story's not, you know, the only story across the U.S., you know? I mean, it's, a, it's unreal is that right now we're dealing with something so, I don't even know, a, a movement of people that wanting to de defund the police when we want the police to do something even more, and now we want to take them away as well. They're, they're already defunded, and I'm not going to throw any of them under the bus. I mean, they have new cases. Oh, I will. <laughs> you will. And, and, and that's 100% okay, you know, because they have new cases every day as well, and, you know, how do, I don't know. I'm not inside of any agency, but that's what's great about us is that we're not in an agency and it's because of the viewers, because of the YouTube platform, because of Facebook that allows us to come out here um, you know, and be able to travel and come help families like yours. With that, I know we have a lot of daylight burning. We have two right now. We can talk about more locations later on, but I did talk to Scott. Scott is the owner of the, the Swampy Pond. Uh -huh. He chooses to go hunting with his boy tomorrow. Um, to go spend some father time together and it was really focusing on us coming in today So although it's almost the end of the day, we need to get over there uh, right away. Let's suit up Andrew. So that's gonna be our, our dirtiest Swampiest Sam is what that's gonna be like we're gonna totally destroy our dry suits today. Yeah, it's cool uh, We're gonna use the uh, the raft. We're gonna use some some sonar uh, because also I have rumors wrapped in a tarp Yes. Sunk on purpose. But I was told that if she was wrapped in a tarp, and even if it was tied, that over the time, the ropes would have rotted and the tarp would have unfolded and then she would have came up. That's why these public areas, I do believe, like they've said, Wabash River. Do you know how big Wabash River is? Yeah. Somebody would have seen, I mean, there's been fishing for more. And, you know, unless I don't, I have no idea. Yeah. All right, well, let's get over to Scott's. Let's start there. And uh, we'll take it from there. Scott? Uh, Sam. There you go. And we got uh, Dan, my uh, camera Hello. guy, and then their uh, crew in tow. So. I was expecting something a lot different. Yeah, so was I. We got off rocks here. So the, uh, the owner of the property says that, that when, four, four years ago when this took place, there was no trails for us to get down here. The water level, at, that, at the time that this took place, Scott, what would the water level have been out here? In the early spring after winter, sometimes it's, well, I've had water up to this little roadway. Right. So, so, the, so the owner says that you know, it's up to the roadway, but that's only three feet. So you're only gonna be able to make it out so far to even try to throw something in. You're not going to be able to bury yeah. it here. Yeah. Okay. Eight inches is what uh, the owner yeah, says. So, so I'm thinking the best way to do this would probably get like some sticks and use those with our hands as we walk out there. We're just gonna have to like walk the whole bog. Yeah, I mean. I mean, just and use sticks or something to try to, you know, like as a snowshoe, but. Yeah, I mean, that at least clears the bog. And we're just gonna have to, and you can obviously, we'll be able to see where we went. We'll just kind of zigzag and just go out there and get yeah. muddy, I guess. Yeah. All right. That's, that's, I, so that's I, I don't, I don't think that this is even a reason to do it, but the reason to do it is to mark it off a hundred percent and be done with it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, especially there's, there's that gel house rumor yeah. that this is the place and for us to not look into that. Okay. Good. Well, let's eliminate gel house rumors. All right, let's go. I just got done talking with uh, Scott, and so kind of gave us the rundown on the pond. 
pretty much said watch out for big turtles. They might eat you. The snapping. Um, uh, snapping turtles. I didn't want to turtles. take because I was afraid you wouldn't come. <laughs> so, Sam, did you hear that? You got snapping turtles? They're snapping turtles, not just big turtles. <laughs> I don't know. That might be. A, uh, I don't know. That might be a reason to go in. I didn't want to tell you because I was afraid you wouldn't come. You know, minus the park going home. All right, that's cool. <laughs> I don't under. I, I've heard the term snapping turtles. They bite. But I mean, Period. intentionally, like, do they chase after you to bite you, or do they? No, 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 no. no, no we're we're going to be zigzagging the whole pond. I we're going to eventually step on them. Ouch. But do they? But they do. Do they attack you? They no. bite you. No, no. But they don't, they don't want to be stepped on, so they defend themselves. But oh. we're going to be stepping on them, and so that's a. Holy I'm nervous to let suit up. <laughs> um, so no sonar, no sonar. No sonar on this one. No. Nope. Just snapping turtles are gonna eat you. Who is? Here, okay. First person to get bit wins. Yes. <laughs> no, no, to not get bit. You get bit, you lose the game. I don't know. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. All right. Ten dollars. If, if you're the loser. All right. So if you Bill. get bit first, you lose. You're the other person. <laughs> yep. So don't get bit. All right. I'm sweating just thinking about this, Dan. <laughs> Are you going to search another place tomorrow? Yes, so uh, we're going to do the motel first thing in the morning for you. Okay, good. good. And then we're running a little behind, but we're, we are efficient with just like, that one's like a lake a boat search, right? Right. And so the good thing about that is not going to take us that long to clear it. So if you have something else, we're going to try to be out of town by like noon, one o'clock. Okay. We're going we're gonna to have to drive all night because the tires put us behind. Right. But, but yes. The other place is just, um, how many, how many more do you have that you want us to make sure we check out? All of Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't clear all of Indiana for you. Baby doll, if I hit the lottery, I'd pay you. Yeah, yeah. Are you excited? Uh, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually excited. All right. Yeah. Oh, I just need to get I had to reach down for this now. Oh, you got gloves. Yeah, yeah, I got my gloves on. I don't know if I can get gloves or not. Think we should uh, stay together then? No, save yourself. I'm actually thinking, Sam. Yeah, 100. percent I think that the inside of the boat, it's almost like a uh, inflatable paddleboard. And since I'm already stuck here, you might have to get it by yourself. All right. I'm thinking we should just strip it of everything we don't need. Just take the pontoon and, and two the, of us, the yeah. middle, and uh. I don't know. Maybe we can just kind of stay together. You hang on one side, I'll hang on the other, and we'll just yeah. plod along. Yep. Uh, Pamela asked about the uh, like where the sonar went. We're dealing with a pond that's not deep enough for sonar. We're really dealing with the because it's so shallow. If anything would have been down here and it would have been like, you know, buried under a foot or two of uh, the peat moss at the time, and then the water went down. Really, we're just dealing with something that was settled in and not that far either, but just already being in there, I mean, you're able to feel anything that's, yeah. you know, not yeah, Oh soft. yeah, we'll be able to feel you something. Feel it. Has a hard bottom in there as well, so the moment, you know, your pole goes down about three feet, you can feel oh, yeah. a nice, you know, yeah, yeah, nice we'll solid rocky bottom. Totally, totally. Scott. At the time, what would have been the actual access point in here? Okay, so they would have had to come in through a field that had no actual road access to get to it, and it would have been from that side and only, and then once they got here, there was none of these trails or roads. So we're really dealing with over here by the trees is kind of where Okay. And so, and then there would be no access on the other side. I mean, if you want to come through that field and walk, you know. So again, they would have had to really said, hey, there's this pond that we have to get out to the middle of it, is where we're at on it. Okay. So again, I'm coming back to that this is the least likely of all of our locations, but we are 100% going to a clear, so that way we can say, you know what, we have cleared this one for you. Jerry, just so you know, like uh, what is we're filling down here? Like we can clearly, yeah, you, know, you have like these twigs here, so we can clearly fill those. So anything that's going to be a stick related, bone related, at all, we're definitely going to be able to uh, fill it down here.
was definitely a turtle. Oh. You got him? You got him? Get him, get him, get him. Get him. Get him. They're right in front of me. <laughs> got him. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That thing's gonna eat Dang. you. He's got dinner. Holy wow. smokes. <laughs> Freaking snapping turtle. And is he, he's a peen snapping turtle. Like hold him up higher so you can pee. So the uh, progress go, report so far, <laughs> we found one snapping turtle, a cord and a uh, kind of a strainer. Uh, the good news, like I said before, like we can fill everything down there, Look including thing, turtles, dude. every little stick. So we've cleared, <laughs> we've cleared about a thirty, a third of the pond so far. So we're gonna keep it going. Okay. There you go. Got him. Well, I'm not from here. Is this like how, how we do it, guys? <laughs> this how you do it? This way? You accept his, oh, his legs want to kick me. Yeah, they're close. Okay. All right, big guy. Go be happy and free. He doesn't move very fast. All right, look at him go. All right, right here. He's good. Oh, he's digging in. Look at that. He just digs on down. I was really worried about it. Right. Had to switch sides. Our arms were underneath there. We're like reaching under the boat and paddling and swimming and feeling. Uh, so probably we'll do a third of it and then switch again. All right, sounds good. So we are almost halfway done with this. We're playing a little game. I did. We did we go over the game when we started? Oh yeah, about yeah, ten dollar challenge. Yeah. So we modified it a little bit, Dan. And that if you get bit, ten dollars. The other one wins. If the other person gets bit, it'll cancel it out. Mm -hmm. Right so. now, right now we're even. I, I I had to owe him ten bucks a moment ago, but then uh, he got bit, so now I, I don't. Have, no, I don't have to. So, so and now we're freaking skittish about any little thing that moves or fills like anything. Yeah, so whoever gets bite, gets bit the most. Pretty much anything that touches us, we're scared right now. <laughs> All right, so see our line? Yeah. Okay. So let's... Now we're cruising. And yeah, the boat is a lot. Yeah, so, I have, to, so I have to go backwards, you have to go forward. Oh man, oh heck no. Turtle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, let's keep going. You going forward makes the nose go my way. Yeah, and I understand how right and lefties work. Yeah. Hang your foot down lower. So we're dragging and spinning your backside. Gotcha. I'm doing it. Yeah, but you're like a rudder. Like okay. a rudder, like a canoe paddle. You understand what a rudder is? Nope, never, never heard of it. Those of you who are uh, new to the channel, here we go. We got Sam over here. We got to turn. We need to spin. Left, left. You're not spinning. Totally not spinning. Here, I'm gonna use a stick. Anyway, those of you that are new to the channel, Sam is a 50-ton boat captain up in the Puget Sound. That's up in uh, Seattle area. Sorry, yeah. Rescue captain. Seattle rescue captain. And um, with that, his main job is like the coolest job in the world where he goes out and he actually rescues people on the water like all day for his job. Mm -hmm. Coolest job ever. Like I, I'm really jealous of what it is that you do helping people in that way. And yeah. one day, tell us about the uh, your biggest rescue day ever. Saved like I don't remember, I don't remember it was like 42 or 43 people in a single day. And, and but and it wasn't just on one boat. Like no. How many different rescues was that, that you went out on that day? Oh, there, there was a whole bunch. <laughs> Truthfully, my mind's a little skittered over all these turtles, so my uh, my numbers are a little off. All right, we really need to rotate this. We're going into shore. Yeah. So so, so me going forward. We're, we're kicking Dan out after this. He did make it more difficult. Yeah. Nope. That's it. Is that what you call it on a boat? Forward? Yeah. Like what do you call forward and reverse on the boat? Just forward and reverse? Yep, just forward and reverse. But then why do you guys make up instead of right and left? You guys like make up names like starboard, starboard and port. Where did those originate from? Well, because which, I mean, is it just because it's the right side of the boat when you're facing it? Or I mean, it just, you know, because the, the steering wheel is usually, sometimes the steering wheel is on the right, sometimes the steering wheel is on the left. Which side is truly the passenger side? Gotcha, okay. All right, well, what do I got here? Hold on. All right. So we need to aim for the right side of that stick. That's what we're aiming for. And then go around that stick. That's our marker, by the way, Dan, over there. That stick in the middle. That way we know where we need to 
do a search and so when we go over it, we'll move our stick on the set of things. Just a log. Wait, 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 you got something. Oh, it's just a, it's just a board. Not like sharper. That's as sharp as we go. It really is a burden with Dan. Like we're not no, making yeah. this up. It really. Yeah, I know. Is. We're, yeah. Like, see, we're plowing mud here, Dan. See that? It's just right there. That's that's really how thick it is. So it's kind of a swirling pattern, is what you do here, Dan. And so my hand is looking like this. Comes up, turns, pulls. Turns, comes up, pulls. Turns, comes up and pulls and then in the process it's staying in the uh down probably i'd say about 12 to 13 inches down inside of the uh silt itself where we get to more of a uh harder harder level to where we can find things like a rock a rock has just been sitting in there hold on wait, 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 quit paddling a rock has just been sitting in there the first rock we pulled up was kind of like freakish because it's a lot of these little con concrete ones in here looking and which is also the same color as uh, bone marrow. So first one we pulled up was kind of. Ooh. All right, spin, uh, spin. Oh, wait, 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 Here's what I can say, Jerry, 100%, any territory that we have covered, I will guarantee she is not there. So that's good as well. Wait, hold on. Oh, we're good. Keep going. Yeah, it's just a little surface wound, a little blood, that's all. Not too deep. That was our last pass, by the way. We're not quitting because he bit me. That really is the extent of the pond here. Oh, that, that's, that's there, huh? Oh, you got you. We are going to participate in cleaning up the boat together, though, right? Yeah. So I still owe you $10. You still owe me 10 bucks. But we'll see. Sharon. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Though. Pretty yeah. good nip there. Yeah, he nipped good. You know? All right. Yeah. Yeah. So we covered the whole pond. Uh, Put it in uh, dirty water. <laughs> I got a little bit of a blood on it. Not much. Was a snapper. Oh, so yeah. sunsets in the next 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we definitely have a lot to uh, clean up this evening to get ready for tomorrow. Um, so I think that the hotel. Let's meet up over there first thing in the morning. We're willing to go early. So. I checked in first. Now was she was she only spotted outside the hotel or was she, do we actually have That's confirmation one scenario that, that she was, that she was in, in the in the motel. motel but then they OD'd her. They supposed to shot her up in the neck and OD'd her and lowered her out the window and that's boom. Okay. We don't know from there. Do we know the room number and they closed it down. They have yeah, never, it's, they it's been shut down since okay. that yeah. happened. Do we know like first floor, second floor, third? It was supposed to be the second floor, second then they moved floor. him to the first floor. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. But that was, that was the closest body of water to where they say she was at. And usually, you know, that's usually, I don't know, I'd say 80% of the time. Yeah. That, that's really... Because I can't see someone driving around with a dead body in a car that no, far. No, absolutely not. But, 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 what, but what gets me, though, is that there was a car with blood, blood in it. So yeah. then we have that scenario as well. Right. That you wouldn't just back up to a pond at that point. You would leave the area as well. Right. Well, 300 down the street and around the corner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where that big pond is. It was it was so many different stories and this this this. But this girl was on the news with the news reporter yeah. and stated it. Yeah, well, like, you know, let us know your top three. Now, is this the same body of water? I also heard a rumor that somebody was fishing and then they thought that they caught a skull in it. No, no that's, that's the reservoir. reservoir. That's, that's right, right off the boat the dock. Right off the boat dock. Okay. Right down and around down that road where the four-way stop is. Right. Mm -hmm. And. To the, to the, so, so fill us in on that story because I heard that somebody yeah. was fishing, but then he had no, the, he had it was, camera. the magnet camera. He was fishing with the magnet. Okay, had a camera on him, threw it down in the water, and it actually showed a skull. Oh. 
And then by the time Harris County divers got out there, if they went, yeah, so they couldn't find nothing. It wouldn't go anywhere. If it would have no, gone, think so. you know, the reservoir is no, not going anywhere. Okay. They said they said they it's sent a their dive team water. out there and didn't come up with nothing. That's what they said. But they they like I said, if something happens in Kokomo, it's on Facebook instantly. Right. Am I lying? Mm -hmm. And they had bass fishers fishermen out there that week. And if they would have been the sheriffs and the divers out there, it would have been on Facebook. They're, they're diving at the reservoir, what's going on, and somebody would automatically hit me But they on practice Facebook. out there yeah. too, the dive team practice out there on the spillway. And, and, and so, I'm, so I'm gonna go with this, Sam, is that I, I'm not saying that the, the dive team didn't go out there, but I question whether the dive team actually went out there. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, you know, one is that would have been, you would have been notified about it right away. But also if a dive team had a gone out there, you and I, as divers, know in a body of water with no current, stays. It's not going anywhere. Nowhere. With boats or anything, doesn't matter. It's not being kicked anywhere. Well, it was a skull-looking thing with looked just like a skull with air. This is her dad, James. Four words, stop. Come on, buddy. Pleasure meeting you. Me too. So the the police had said though that water. it was a mask out there off the boat dock, and it might have blew away. Supposedly the sheriffs went out mm -hmm. and dived. I don't know what's that because it's not town city limits so it would be the county right but you know i don't know if there's proof where we can get documentation of that or public records or anything so um, but if you look at the video though you try to study the video you, you kind of want to make yourself see that it could be just a boater with the shading on it you know it could be anything that you put your mind but, but no. is there a video <laughs> yeah, somewhere. It's, um, i've got his name somewhere i don't know what his name is there it is there it is oh wow let's watch it so it was right there. Yeah, it was, yeah I saw it. It looked maskish. Let's see it again. I don't even think that's just a mask. Yeah, it's just a mask. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. So yeah. that could have been yeah. some, you know, yeah, him, he was doing mask. just to get ratings, playing. Yeah, yeah that's a mask. That. Yeah, skull's more round. Yeah, that's what I was Yeah, yeah, skull's more round. Yeah, that's more. Plus it looked like he was only down like eight feet and there's a lot and there's a lot of YouTubers as well that Play will I, I'm not saying that that video was faked, but there are a lot of videos that are faked. Like they will put things in the water intentionally. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just to get, get the attention. Views. Yeah, I think so. that's a mask. Desiree. The apartment's out on three hundred where Tia used to live. The lady that lived there said we could go on a property she wasn't there at the time. And we went up there and there was barns and stuff and there's a big body of water and the drive is off by itself in the woods. You just drive down and up, and then it goes to her house, but it's in the woods. Okay. And we've been out there seven times. So, so, so motel it in in the morning is, let's go seven. see if the neighbor across the road will let us uh, seven. clean up oh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, um, yeah, he was just over here. Oh, perfect. So he's already on board. We'll see uh, everybody in the morning. All right, guys, see you in the morning. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Get some antibiotics. Yeah, yeah, I'll put some in there. Good morning, we're back on day two looking for Karina and we didn't do proper introductions yesterday. You showed up kind of uh, after we'd already got started, but this is uh, James, this is uh, Karina's dad. And uh, I mean, I know this is losing a child. I have not done so and I can't even imagine, but you know, just, I break down with the thought of, you know, coming out and helping families like yours. And I, mean, I kind of want to jump into this is, Kind of the location I want to start at yesterday, but we had to get over to Scott's. What is the significance of the hotel here? Supposedly she was here in OD. They loaded her out a window in a tarp, our sheet, um, and then supposedly took her to the pond and left her lay there, from what one of the rumors are. Other than that, I couldn't tell you too much more. Okay. So uh, I, we were at, we actually stayed at the back of the hotel last night. And I mean, there's some lighting back there. I mean, it's it has to be really ballsy, in my opinion, to have lowered somebody out of the back window here. Well, if you go up, straight up the middle of the building, it'll take a left, and they was on the back left wing on that opposite side of the where the windows face half moon. So it would have been very possible to do it. And then like the camera system didn't really work. This is known for uh, high drug activity in the day before they closed down, plenty of arrests, plenty of, of everything. 
but they supposedly loaded her down from the second floor and out they went. Let's let's and take a let's take a walk over there. Let's go see yep. what yep. section of the building. There's four or five windows that cannot collide together. They're uh, what would you call it? door to door rooms. Okay. And so those windows on on the inside, I mean, they they, they really swing open. Open up big tight. Yeah, yeah, they open up. Because the fella was here with his wife. His wife was the manager, and they lived here with their kids. And as she was ODing, they put her in the bathtub to try to save her, and couldn't. And then they load her up the window. Supposedly wrapped in something, put in a vehicle, which you could have had anywhere, and disappeared from here. So that's why mom's infatuated on the pond. It makes good sense. Yeah, it's just right over through here. When all this four years ago, all this was nice and clean. It wasn't a lot of overgrowth. So, so this building wasn't here four years ago. Yes, it was. It was under renovation. Okay. They actually had a dumpster sitting out here that we kept calling about and trying to get inside this dumpster, and I never got back with anybody. So I just got in the dumpster myself and was looking as well. But I mean, it had everything from the roofs and windows. So I couldn't move a lot of it. But, but enough that you were able to clear that one. Yeah. So the pond is, you know, the this pond is logic. Is the pond has always been my most logical location from here. If the you know water rumors are true. Yeah. I mean, if she's in a sheet, you got two people, or she's in a tarp, you just make a straight trail. I mean, you, you can get there okay. easily. I mean, so she's weighing like 115, 125 at the most of dead weight. Well, actually, okay, uh, let's head over to the pond. Yeah. Um, let's throw the sonar out. This one's a lot deeper than the uh, swamp from yesterday. Okay. So. how much more sense this pond makes to me than, oh absolutely than the, the swamp we were at yesterday yeah, yeah you can walk out there and not sink yeah i mean it's an easy hotel to hear i don't know how deep it is i mean if anything right now my money's on this one mm -hmm. it looks like a fairly firm bottom mm -hmm. so, so what are we gonna be looking for on sonar to begin with although it's been four years if the tarp theory is part of it there's going to be some mass that's going to show up on sonar mm -hmm. We also have some of the ropes. Ropes do show up on sonar as well. Mm -hmm. And really we're dealing with nothing on that side really. So I mean our main focus is a private drive coming in. So he, he was saying none yeah. of this was grown up. He says that in the last few years all this has grown up and everything was real okay. accessible. So if they were walking, I mean it might even be over there. My focus would be like as soon as they come in the driveway, it's quiet. I don't think they would drive farther down. But like I said, we need to search all yeah, of it. Yeah. It's just a nice, slow, steady search. Mm -hmm. And then we'll dive on any targets that we see. Yeah. All little vermin and stuff. What would it look like that you would be looking for? Would it be like a blemish or something? Or would it actually be like a skeletal remain that you would? So you're, you're, we're dealing with a flat bottom in most locations because it's a pond. The pond has been dug out, which means we're not dealing with rocks that are going to give us false readings that we're, we don't have to <laughs> compete, com compete with those. Okay. And so, um, anything round, you know, a skull will stick up, especially what I'm really looking for, though, is fingers crossed that we're dealing with a tarp, that we're dealing with more mass. Um, because things like, especially like barrels, you know, to give you an example the size of a, you know, 55 gallon drum barrel. Gotcha. Really, we were on a case two days ago, Sam, and plain as day. I mean, you can see them. So, those are the things we're looking for is something that it will been. pop up for sure. And the way that. Not unnormal that shouldn't be here. Yep. And so we'll be able to actually spot that. If we're dealing with just, you know, remains only, like she was thrown in, no clothing, no nothing, we're dealing with skeletal remains, you know, it's the skull that we'd be looking for. Again, a little anomaly. The nice thing I like about ponds is, you know, they're not going to, this one's not going to be too deep. I'm going to guess maybe 10 feet deep at the deepest. With sonar, you know, the, the wider and the deeper we go, the smaller the image is going to be on screen. Mm. So what's great about that is we're dealing with something more shallow. Right, so I have a 
that is nominally off the left over here. We'll, uh, about 11 feet out. So for those of you uh, wondering what we're looking at for on sonar here, this is a, a side scan here and we're casting off 11 feet to the left and 11 feet to the right. Oh, we got something else right here too. So that's uh, something to take a look at. Uh, anyway, the black part is a water column. And then this part up here is uh, down imaging. So this is looking straight down on the object, whereas this is looking to the left and to the right. And then the, what, the other thing that's really nice about this is we are dealing with a flat bottom, as we had mentioned before. So any type of anomaly is going to uh, stick up really nice for us. Okay, right here, Sam? Yeah. We wanna check something here? Yeah, go ahead and suit up. Uh, we'll definitely uh, be in the water here. Uh, James and Jerry, if you would like to come over and take a look at what it is that we're uh, seeing here. So, so I never like do this to bring false hope. You know, I bring this to make sure that you're kept up as to what it is I'm seeing. And that gives us hope that we actually might be able to, you know, solve this one. So as the sonar is going, you know, this is like the uh, past of what I'm seeing. So I've, I've done a couple of circles in this area. So the first thing, you know, so I'm, see, I'm picking up the same anomaly in the same area. And what you have is you have like a casting of shadows is how this is working. So this is a, this is the boat that's down the middle. This is the water column for the depth. So, you know, we're about two and a half, three feet here. And then off to the left, depending on which direction I was going, you know, it's going to be another two and a half, three feet to the left of the boat from where I was at. And this same anomaly is showing up multiple times as I do uh, multiple circles and bring the boat back around. And so when we're dealing with, you know, two, four, six, you know, we're dealing with something that is, you know, it could be a turtle or it could be, you know, Karina. And so when I came back around, this time hitting at different angles is going to produce different results. But the good news is, is we're hitting in the same location every time. And we're hitting with this last one is what really is that we're dealing with, you know, six to 11 feet. We're dealing with something that is five feet in length. I can't make any promises, guarantees, but that's what we're here to do is to rule out anything that could possibly. Questions? Log. Could be. We, we never know. So that's... That's what you have to go down. That, that's why we're hitting. Yeah. That's why we're going to send um, Sam down. We're going to go check that one out. I have something else that's also right over here as well. Did you pick nothing up on that side? So we're, I'm going to... I didn't pick anything up on the far side. I mean, as far as the brush goes, again, the coming in the driveway would make the most logical sense for anybody that is looking to sneaking into where it's, you know, most quietest. We have this anomaly over here, but this one is more exposed. So I definitely want to get down on this one with you first, Sam. Yep, let's and do it. Rule it out. And you may be able to just uh, walk directly yeah, out there. It doesn't so. look doesn't look like it's very deep. No, at all. no, I just yeah. All right, let's go. So just uh, right over there. All right, you want to come on. All right, stop moving. Stop moving. Whatever it is, I got it. It's plastic. Or tire. Whatever this is, it's stupid heavy. It's a, it's a barrel. What? 55. Yeah. I don't know. Feels, feels like it. I'm going to go down and see if I can feel inside. Uh, it's just filled with shales. How, how big is the barrel? Uh, I don't even know if it is a barrel. It has a weird shape. I'll, I'll bring it up a little bit. You see. 
I mean, it looked like it was only like a foot and a half. So you, you've cleared that one then. Well, it feels like a, uh, like maybe it actually used to be like a, like a ring or something. Can't really tell what it is, but it's definitely, uh, I mean, you can see, this is the shape of it here. Okay. You, you um, cleared the inside of it, though. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. All right. We're, well, we're good with that chip. We're uh, we're clear on this one. Yeah, I could I could feel it inside. All we have is this little trash and okay, and the uh, clams. All right. Bye. Left right here. All right. Yeah, there's just this drop off right here. It's like a little lip, like a little ledge. Right. Okay. Yeah, that must be it then. Yeah. So. Just because look, so my feet are are next to each other, and then I'm gonna stand up. See the difference? Yeah. Water. 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 Yeah. Um. So. We know the sonar works though, for James. It's on a tire, a few other things. Did the fine crane on this one. Sure. Um, nothing is ever 100% certain, but I'm fairly confident that based upon what we found, or didn't find, we can mark this one off. We can mark this one off, we can mark the swamp off. You have a few more locations for us today. Well, I want to go see if anybody lives in that house now. On that property, there's a small pond. Okay. Out on 300, and then that's about all I got. Okay. All my theories were always on my end. Okay. Well, we'll clear the pond so that way we can put More that one behind us and focus on land after that. Okay. So, all right. Here's the So, and other people have heard it, so I'm not crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, and then we found a flip flop and uh, I stuck up the stick. Take off. And the lady that lived there has told me she's very, Please I had been to drive past there, it's been six months, and that shoe was still on that stick, and it was beautiful. All the winter, the winch, the shoe was still there. But it wasn't her, she had sandals on, but she wouldn't miss them. Okay. But that place has just haunted me something terrible. All right, yeah, let's head over there and... Okay. Did you get that? Yeah, so she was just saying that uh, she does ghost hunting and she's been out to this body of water quite a few times and she's called out to her granddaughter and said, you know, if, if you're here, s say something. And she's heard, she's heard a response. Um, I don't know how, yeah, I, I don't know anything about that type of stuff, but it's definitely where we're headed to now. I don't know where you want to pull off to see if you go to through the apartments, but there's a driveway up there and it only goes down so far and they got it blocked off with a chain, but nobody lives there. This is all I have to oh. my name. You take that and put it in your gas tank, okay? We're not, we're not taking it. Yes, that. you are. Yes, you are. I don't argue one time. Yes. I never argue with a grandma, so yes, you have you to take it. I'm sorry. All there's right. only $8 there, but you take okay. the money. All right, all right. But uh, if you want to get out and walk up that way or yeah. whatever and see, I don't know what you want to do. If you get through the apartment park or you want to go down to the where you drive, it's a, a down hand, and then they got a chain across. Is, is that we the can move the chain? Is that the closest location? No, the, the driveway is. We can take no. the chain off and drive through. If the house is empty. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let's just let's just go do that then. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna go trespass. That's what we're gonna do. All right. Let's do the road. Let me drive. Yeah, I'll let you drive. All right. We're switching uh, seats because it's Jared's RV and. He's gonna be responsible for breaking it, not me. Oh, you explained to everybody that I'm a better driver? Actually, yes. <laughs> exactly. No. Okay. She's not home. I've called and left a message with her to get back with me. She knew, her son knew Karina. Okay. And everything, and we've done searched all this, but we couldn't get to the water. Okay. You want me to try to open that gate? Yeah, if, if it just drops, let's just go through the... Uh, that, uh, that, that purple means that they, that they can and will shoot. Yeah, so when they put the purple on the trees out here, this area, that means oh, that's a whole different ball game. Are you being serious? Dead serious. 100%. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the purple. It's padlock on it. That's okay. We'll uh, work. We'll, so, but this is the closest. This is closer than the apartments. Take I it. don't know. Uh, yeah, because Let's it's go check the apartments. up and around, and you can get to the water right there. Okay, that's perfect. All right, I'll just pull up for it then. Are you being serious? I, I'm being serious. Where did you get this information? No, this is I, this is just known information. My, my brother used to live out this way. He told me this is a thing. Um, purples. That's like. It, do not step or I will shoot. They have. Are you illegally? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you. Um, purple. <coughs> shoot on sight. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is. So I'm. I might be more comfortable. I don't mind walking a little further. <coughs> like in front of me. <laughs> Maybe Dan needs to get the better shot of us. Walking. That's true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You are the cameraman. You yeah. need to uh, get out. Get out in front. <laughs> okay. Of the action. <laughs> Purple. Yeah, but this is a thing. I don't know if you want to look up, up your phone. Your phone's probably faster. Okay. Well, my phone's busy right now. Let's go this way. <laughs> Uh-oh, Sam. Yeah, Jared's going first. So, I had a dream of her in a barn, and I seen uh, her arm over the edge of the barn. Off. Yeah. There's a barn up there. And when I went in, I seen that lots of old Lord Jesus please that it be her. And I was so scared to climb them steps. But when I got up there, there was nothing there. But I seen it as plain as day. And that's why this place is just haunted. And like I said, I've got her on tape. Calling right down there through there. She called up my name. And then when we got back here, I played the tape back for the girls that was walking. And they heard it. She cries out, Mamma, 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 three times on my recorder. I'm not crazy. They all heard it. Mm -hmm. And they all just about fell out, you know. We did find a blue tarp, and we were digging on our hands and knees. But it turned out to just be pillows and bed clothing from a motel, which could have been. We don't know. Yeah. Cops wouldn't come out. Well, we're here now. Let's check this uh, body of water. Okay. And now uh, let's mark this off the list for you. Yeah. I just can't go. not going far. All that wasn't there four, four years ago, you can imagine. But that's an easy drop from the motel. Mm -hmm. And there was, there's no drug activity over there in that apartment building. I think the biggest thing that I'm interested in, though, is like, what is the likelihood of coming up to this particular driveway? Again, we're dealing with, you're really going to have to wait out in this. Mm -hmm in order to make anything happen. It's just not, again, it's not something that somebody would put that type of effort into to put themselves into a muddy situation that deep. I mean, I've, I've never really experienced that ever before. I don't want to say, no, we're not searching this one, but I have to, based upon what we know of past ones, mm -hmm. and as well as, you know, cases not just ours, but other people, you know, I mean, in the history of missing persons, a shallow swamp has never been where it's at. How often is a shallow swamp searched? You make a valid point. I mean, I mean, it's, I don't know, maybe throw, maybe throw five or six pieces of plywood out, walk on out, you know, that OSB board, come out with some OSB board, throw it out, walk out a little ways, dump it, come back, I don't know. How many actual access points? I, what I'm looking at is just from, I'm somebody that has committed a homicide mm -hmm. at this point. I have a body to get rid of. Mm -hmm. How much effort is Sam going to put in? Uh, ridiculous effort. Like if you're, if you're trying to hide something, you know, if you did something that serious, that severe, <laughs> you're putting in some serious effort. I don't, I don't think someone's just gonna dump it in a spot that it's gonna be found, I mean, in I, my opinion. What so. would you, I, I'm turning this lead, you are now the lead investigator on this. What would you like to do, Sam? I think we should, I think we should do it. I think I want to identify how many access points do you want to look, like how much of this do you, are we going to trudge out into? Like if, if this is identical to what we just did yesterday. Yeah, it's pretty much going to be the same as yesterday. I mean, it looks a little deeper in the center, but I mean, this is the same. You know, whatever is, you know, it looks like the drive is right here. I think we should search in this area here. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, maybe go look at, you know, what it's like by the apartment. Yeah. I'm um, just trying to look at the different access points. Maybe we can do a good Google image. Something, uh, something mm -hmm. is really pulling you right now. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a lot of it is, you know, you know their belief. 
you know, the grandmother's belief um, that she is here. You know, I don't know how um, real, I don't, I don't know anything about what she's talking about, you know, as far as, you know, what she's hearing, what she's feeling. Um, but we're here for the family, and I know that, you know, us searching this pond, the fact that we searched it, will give, you know, the family, you know, some peace of mind that they don't have right now. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing, you know, even if we can't find her, is we can at least give them a peace of mind that they can check off a few different spots. This is a hot spot for the grandmother. So I think we need to do this out of respect to the grandmother. Okay. So let's uh, pop the drone up, get a visual of it. And uh, I think that based on that, our next thing is to walk the perimeter of this okay. and identify kind of some access points that we really want to focus in on. So what are we trying to accomplish with the drone? Uh, identify how big we're actually dealing with. Like, does it stop over there at the little power lines and the little island over there? Or how much more do we have? Looks like it also gets deeper over there. So if we come on out, there's the little island. And how much more is over there? So there's the apartments. And then as we walk the perimeter, what are some possible entry points? where a car could have driven over to that would make any type of sense to search. That's what we're trying to identify. Newer cell phone tower, road there. So if you look at you know that road coming in, so I mean, if you're looking for easy access, you have another pond that's back there as well, but the cell phone tower appears to be newer. But you do have a little pond over there as well. So, you know, as far as driving too, you know, drivability right next to it, you've got that one there, you've got that one there. Those two kind of make more sense to me than this one right now, because right now we're on a private driveway. Yeah. The grandma was saying that they took about 500 steps from the car while, who, while dragging a body. Who took 500 steps? I'm not sure. The grandma was just talking about something about 500 steps from the car while dragging a body. But I want to ask her what she's talking about. Okay. So we have a huge pond over here. We This would take us three, Forever. three, four days to search the entire yeah. pond. I mean, right right now, if I was to search a pond, it would be the one over by the cell phone tower, mm -hmm. depending on how long that cell phone tower and that road has been there. I'm guessing that road has been there a while because it has the field in the back over there. You know, switch back around right to it. Well, should, I think I think we should um, tell... Which, which is over kind of where the barn is at also. I mean, so she's if she's being pulled towards the barn, where exactly right here is the barn at? It's somewhere over here. It, but you know, then we have dad that's being drawn to not water. The, his theories are more land-based. Yeah. Well, we're not we're not here to search the land so much. We're here to yeah, 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 check the water. So yeah, that, that's somebody else's game. Yeah. Or maybe if we come back. Is this the barn right here? Well, we have limited time. Um, we should have, you know. Yeah, we, have, we have two hours to actually be on the road. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, maybe ask the grandmother where here she would like us to search, yeah, where, where she feels the strongest. Let her know we have time to crunch and let her make a point as to where she wants us. Okay. Jerry, can you come take a look at this with us? So, yes, what we're up against, you know, one is we're up against the time that we were supposed to be on the road last right. night. Oh, geez. And, um, because we have another cold case to go get on. Right. But we want to make sure that we put in the proper time while we're here in town because it, it wasn't anybody's fault as far as the tires. Right. This location here, I mean, we're dealing with a really huge swamp. We're dealing with your barn that's over here. And really, we have like an hour, hour and a half right. with cleanup time with another hour after that. What can we do to, you know, where, do you, where are you being pulled the most as far as, hey, Jared, we have these out here. Where would you like us to search? And, and, I'll, and I'll give you my assessment as to what, we're, what is we're looking at here. First of all, we're dealing with the we're dealing with a private drive right here. Right. But uh, if we look over here on this corner over here, uh -huh. let me I'll come over here a little bit. But we have the cell phone tower that's over here. Right. And you have a pond that's back here, and I'm sure you've been over in this section before no. as well. Okay, so let me come over here. So I'm looking at coming in from the road over here from uh -huh. the from the town. Would I, you know? If I'm trying to get rid of somebody, going to be driving into places where people are going to see me. But what you do have is you do have a little, you know, quiet pond that's over here. 
you also have access to in the pond right here. Right, I see it now. And then you also have access to, you know, coming into this field here, right at the corner of this pond. I also question this one, what other access points do we also want to take a look at? It says, you know, maybe we should check one of those as well. You have a farm field over here, but that's, you know, it's not a path of least resistance to get into this one. Right. And then we have, now the apartments are new or they, they were there at the time? Oh, they've been there. They've been there for you. Okay. They've been there. So they're nobody's going to come through, uh, you know, an apartment complex. Right. Where, you know, potential of being seen. And then you have the private drive that we're on right now with the potential of a homeowner right. coming down. But at two o'clock in the morning, that little driveway stops right there. They could have went either way on that. There was a lane right there, remember? Uh -huh. All they had to do was pull in that far and just boom. Right. And now what were you saying about the 500 steps or something? You were... Oh, that was the girl that said uh, they she uh, counted 500 steps back to the van from where they parked. And who, who's the girl? Who's the girl? She was a girl that was in jail. So, so we, we have a And then she got out and then mom and Ricky and all of them got together and, and they went out. We went clear to your, uh, to Rome? What was it? Um, Gas City or somewhere. Yeah. It was out that way. Jonesboro. Jonesboro. Wait, wait, so this girl is saying that she was with them at the time that of disposal? disposal? That was one of them, yes. Then why isn't yeah. she out here showing us because where she's, she's she gone ran. and missing now? She, she's ran and her mother passed right afterwards and the cops said she's a liar, everybody's a liar to KPD. They all say that everybody's lying and nobody's coming forward with junkies and they don't want to deal with junkies. Okay. So they said they 500 steps. Those were hers. That's what she said. She uh. said they was dragging her. So if it's true, <coughs> they were dragging her by the hair of the head and she fell and they was dragging her. So she would have miscounted or whatever. Yeah. But she told her mom 500 steps. She Ish. told me 500 steps. And the weird thing is that like I was telling you, they got, she got out of the Kokomo downtown and uh, she was supposed to meet me and show me where Karina was at. And I said, you could leave and go. We, just show us where she is. And then she one. came all the way from downtown Kokomo out here, the back way, all the way up here, slowed down because we were following her. No. And she went clear out here to the gas station, turned back and went back to the Kokomo mall and we'd lost her in the mall because they lived clear in Rochester, Indiana. Why would you backtrack unless she was showing Rochester her mom north. where they had put Karina? So that's what they was thinking the whole time was they was coming this way to improvise the 300 mark. But it doesn't make sense to drive clear out of Kokomo, out of Kokomo, out here, and all the way down here, and all the way back to Kokomo Mall. You know what I'm saying? And then go back all the way back to Rochester. It was way out of the way. Unless she was showing her mom where she was at. Mm -hmm. And based on the area, that draws me to the pond over by but that's not 500 steps. Like none of these are 500 steps. Right. And if you're on narcotics or whatever you're on, if that's yeah, not was, nothing, right. it's going to make sense to you probably. Yeah. And then the emotions are probably high. The adrenaline is probably kicked in. Yeah, yeah. And if they're dragging, they're, they're taking smaller steps. Yeah, yeah there, was three, well, there was three people, two carried, yeah. one, one walked, held and one's, and but, but about, about how far is it from here to the street? So, so here, here's where, here's about where 500 I'm, steps. But here's where I'm at on this, on this particular location. You have multiple people that I don't feel as though anybody's going to allow anybody to go deep into a swamp and get muddy and get back into the car. Mm -hmm. That's what you would do. Like. But see, all this wasn't like this. Yeah, yeah so, so I mean, a, even a hoe here is only yeah. going to get you so far out and it's going to be exposed. Yeah, so, we're, so we're looking true. for a deeper body of water. I would really like to go take a look at the cell phone tower property mm -hmm. <clears throat> to see if that one is deeper. The one right there by the bridge. So if we're gonna head back down to... We'll follow you, because I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. So yeah, let's head that way and I assess that one before we do this. <coughs> so the girl that knows is on the run, or gone. Yeah, you know, and here's where I'm at on this one. I mean, we're at a, lo like the swamp. The swamp could have been searched by anybody, any locals here. Mm -hmm. We have a special skill yeah, water. set mm -hmm. with deeper water so we really need to focus on the deeper water and then have identified also mm -hmm. places that we can leave for locals and the family to come yeah. back and finish their search yeah like the swamp could have been that yeah for them yeah they could have done the swamp the location back behind the motel that we did mm -hmm. this morning mm -hmm. that was that was a specialty that was us yeah and we identified yeah. a few items in there that you know could have certainly been was not and so 
Like yeah. I said, based upon the aerial, based upon what I see, based upon the thinking mm -hmm. of, you yeah. know, we need to be in a secluded area where we might not be caught. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the most sense to me right now for us to go take a look at. Yeah, okay. And and that may be a lighter swamp as well to where, yeah, again, yeah. locals, once we're gone, can, you know, yeah. finish that if we don't find her today. But if that's deep enough, we need to get into that one. Yeah, we need, to, we need to use our, our specialty and our strengths and yeah. utilize that because we have skills that other people here don't. Yeah. Whereas, I, I, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. All right, all right. I'm, I'm on. I'm on. Board with it. It's birthday today. Too. Today is Karina's birthday. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yesterday was Grandma's birthday. Today's Karina's birthday. right here over here I think that one's just too overgrown like that one but based upon a 500 step theory and one is you know there are it, it does look like people come on this one quite a bit You know, somebody is familiar with coming out to this one for sure. You can see where they're climbing up and down quite a bit. But I think that, you know, really where we're at, you know, our specialty is getting into deeper water and identifying things that other people cannot. And I think that we've identified a few locations that could still be searched. I would say, you know, as far as checking them off, I mean, I'm, I'm almost saying, chance that she wouldn't be in these ponds because again they're so shallow mm -hmm. and that you know your family locals can really focus on and do a search similar to what we did you know at the swamp the other day you know, just grab an inner tube grab some waders and you know just kind of get out and you know just start filling through those if you have any suspicions as to some of those that she might be in the other side of the pond that we were just in I mean that was all shallow mm -hmm. you know you go all shallow here and nobody's gonna go out and swim up to their neck especially multiple people like if you're dealing with one that's like his job is like you know hitman to take care of people he's going to make sure that nobody ever gets found right and it's not going to be in a body of water i mean it's going to be out in the desert somewhere very deep or a field or somewhere you know somewhere where they're never going to you know locate whereas a body in you know, a body of water always has the opportunity for a fisherman to catch on it um you know for a body to float where they might end up getting caught on that one yeah, but checking the swamps, you guys can do like we did, like he was saying. You'll get the inner tube, get a little super suit on, throw on some gloves, some rubber gloves, or not, or some leather gloves for the snapping turtles, and then just then just do like we did, life vest. Yeah. Are, are there any other bodies of water that we feel are, that are deep? Like, hey, you know, why you guys are here, we need a sonar in there, we need the ability for you guys to dive if we find something. I think the only other location is, I mean, how big is the reservoir, and would that have been something that they would have gone to. It's down the street from Cape's Trailer. It's huge. Um, access all the way around it. So, you know, the, the last thing I want for you guys to feel like is, you know, Jared and Sam could have done more. At this oh, point, no. at this point, I don't feel like we personally could do more for what our specialty is based upon, you know, the information that we have before us right now. And I think that, we, you know, we've identified a few things. I think that, you know, giving you guys some ideas also for some additional searches ponds are the best way to do it. Uh, we, in fact, we just figured some of that out yesterday, you know, some ways to make it better. You know, get something to lay on, you know, a raft and kind of fill around for some of these locations. Uh, because, you know, they're, they're, not, they're actually not hard to search, they're just time, time consuming. And the, like I said, like Sam said, make sure you wear gloves. Don't get bit by those turtles. Yeah, yeah get, get your life vest, your gloves, get your inner tube, lay on your belly. Yeah. Just, you know, just, just, just crawl through. So. Is there anything more I can do for your family, Jerry? For you, James? No. Good. Okay. Um, so I, I think at this point, you know, it's while we weren't able to solve this one today, you know, it was the coming out, doing our specialty things that you know some other people cannot. We did identify a few items that we can 100% check off the pond back in the hotel. The you know, we're now to spread the message and further awareness of Karina. So if you're in the Kokomo area, the Indiana area, they 
and want to help out, what is the best way for them to reach out to you and your family for volunteers to come out? So you know what? Yes, the, I'll I'll get in that pond and search here, here, and here, and you know for the swamps. They don't mind your Facebook. Facebook, Jerry McClurkin, G E R R Y M C C L E R K I N. Okay. I'll I'll leave the link down in the description below. Is there a uh, actual Facebook book page set up for Karina as well? She's out there somewhere alone. I think is one of them. That's the one that we are over. Well, I got one. She's out there alone. Okay. So, that be so, so we'll leave a link down below for any that we are aware of. So just make sure I get those. And let's see if, uh, you know, see if we can help Jerry and help James and their family. And let's see. And get the news to step in and look more. Yeah. So if and you the have, FBI in here. Yes. Yeah, so if you guys have any pull at the FBI, any uh, other agencies, any news organizations, let's continue to spread the uh, message that uh, you know Karina's out there. And uh, one of the other things I kind of want to touch on, and I don't know if this is okay or not, but we are living in a world as well. You know, Karina's a you know, beautiful young girl. We're, my girls and my wife, I worry about, and they're, they're always into these cold cases of missing persons that we're dealing with, you know, trafficking as well. Could be a potential that I'm sure that you guys have thought about that as well. And so we're not limited to just Kokomo and Indiana. I mean, keep your eyes peeled across the entire U.S. You never know where Karina might show up. It could be here. She could still be alive. You know, we're not saying that she's 100%, you know, has left us. Um, you know, we're coming back to the blood as well that was in the trunk to where, you know, Jerry was telling us yesterday, they didn't give you a positive, whether it was her blood or not. Correct. Whether she was alive or not. Correct. And there's, you know, and there's cases all across the U.S. to where, you know, 5, 10, 15 years later. But they did tell him to start looking for her remains. Yeah. So there's that too. So, on that note, we appreciate you guys uh, watching and supporting what we're doing, allowing us to, you know, share your story and to help spread the message of what it is that Sam and I can do. You know, not just dip in the Pacific Northwest, but across the U.S. as we get out on some of these, you know, journeys to uh, you know, really help families the best way we can. And although we weren't able to solve this one today, we really do appreciate you uh, sharing your time and your family with us. I do appreciate you guys too. You're welcome. Thank you. No problem, man. Thank you both. Yeah, yeah, like we were saying, My granddaughter said to me, and she held my hand, she said, I'll be all right, Mamaw. I'll be all right.